we have myself, uh, Jesse Cervini, uh, future team world champion, and former team world champion after this weekend, Kevin Broberg. Yep. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. How are you tonight? Just Jeeps? <laughs> it's called, it's called the, reigning, I'm, I'm the reigning team champion. I'm reigning a lot of champions, actually, as it were. It's true. Well, you know, if they if you don't if they don't have a championship, you can't be uh, dethroned. Yep. There's no defense clause in these championships. <laughs> Kevin just shows up in the middle of a forest in Saskatchewan. I'm here to defend my championship. No takers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> just, just go up to the board to like like just poke my head over the border. Anyone want to play UFS? No. All right. Canadian team champion for another year. So tonight, I guess we are going to talk a little bit about some spoilers. We had a, another round of spoilers this week. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, any last minute prep you need to do for the World Championship. And, we're, of course, we'll always take your questions here in the chat, if you have any at all. So I guess we'll get started with the spoilers. So our first uh, preview card, rather, for tonight is Faye Long, another seven hand size air character. How shocking. So this is a 718 with air, fire, and water. Uh, he has E once per turn. Change each combo requirement on your attack to combo. And then E, your face-up attack with a printed damage of three or less, gets plus one damage for each attack card in your card pool. He seems pretty yeah. good. Yeah, Phelan Long's... <laughs> He's he's really nice. I, I'm not sure how much how much uh, mileage you'll get out of that first ability, but the second ability adds up. It can add a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'm excited about the first ability. His Tengu dives are going to be ridiculous. You go ranged move Tengu dive. Oh shucks, someone blocked my Tengu dive. I'll play another Tengu dive. E with Fei Long, make it instead of combo ranged, make it combo combo. Tengu dive you. Exactly. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I think that you can go a lot bigger than tang than playing Tengu dives. Well, conceivably, I hope you can you can do something better, more interesting than Tengu dives. Oh, for sure. It's just the thing that first came to my mind was his ability to get around Tengu dive, not clearing the previous one from the card pool, and that was like the immediate first thing that came to my mind. So, mm. that, yeah. I, that, that was just my thought. I mean, there's going to be a lot of other attacks that are going to be really great with him that are three difficulty, a uh, three damage rather, that also add up. But uh, Tango Dodge is just the first thing that came to my mind. Yep. Yeah. I mean, if we're, I mean, if you look at his just his first ability, he's got some really fun things. There's going to be some crazy interactions. But I really can't wait for just power poke. The, the long term, the big game plan. You're just like, poke, 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 poke. Boom. Yeah. You're just like, it's, it'll play a lot like how he plays in Street Fighter. Like, actually in 4, he played a ton like that, where he's just like, you just tried to get, com his combos were mainly based on building up, like trying to chain them into the corner, and then you did uh, Dragon Fire Kick into the air, and you're just like, and in half your health. Bar. Yeah, I think it'll, playing against him should be really interesting because you know the first couple attacks are, you know, maybe actually I think you actually probably want to build a deck that has a couple pretty decent sized moves to lead off with, you know, because if your first attack's five damage, that's bigger than any three damage move, um, if you can work your combos and stuff. But when it gets to like the second or third or fourth attack, now it's like, well, can I even afford to block this if it's not killing me? Because the next move is going to be even bigger. Right, I mean, it, it kind of has that kind of that Snake Man thing going on, where Snake Man's yeah. moves scale up over the course of a turn based on uh, the number, effectively based on the number of attacks you've played, provided you're on low zone the whole time. So I feel like his damage boost is a little more open ended than Snake Man's, but in that it could it doesn't have to just be lows, but it's a little less less open in that it's got to be three damage or more. I think he's going to be really good on fire with uh, cards like Improved Design. Because now his three damage fire move becomes a four damage fire move. Then if it's not blocked, it becomes a five damage fire move. It can really add up over the course of the turn. Yeah, I think as a support, as like just out, just seeing the early glimpse of his support, really shows that he's gonna give like 
all three of those symbols a different attack style. Right. That's what I really like of it as. Like, oh. well, let's talk about one yes. of his support cards. Uh, the first card we have is uh, Rekaken. Uh, this is a four difficulty, three check fi- uh, attack with a plus three mid lock. Is air, fire, and water. Has breaker two, punch, and combo mid attack. Combo E, this attack gets plus two speed and plus two damage, and if it deals no damage, add it to your momentum after it resolves. Oh. Hotness. I do well, like... That's a common. That is at common. You're going to get your booty packed in at your uh, limited events with this guy, because everyone's going to be able to get these. And a Breaker 2 block yep. is not something to laugh at. Nope. Yeah, I, I really love this card because, you know, if you're trying to defend against it, all three options, blocking, half blocking, and full blocking, kind of have their merits. You know, full blocking, you obviously take no damage. Taking it to the face, you commit no foundations, you have to pass no control check, and you don't spend a card. But then partial blocking lets you save a little bit of vitality if you're somehow confident you're not getting killed right now. Um, and also, not let it go to momentum right away. Right. One thing I think uh, Phalong, and I forgot to mention this with his character card, what, what's going to be kind of an interesting puzzle to put together, especially on fire, is if you're going to try to use Robot Masters, yet his gimmick relies on three di- three damage moves, and you kind of got to, ass- if you're going to do that, assemble the puzzle so you're always getting just one. Because yeah. on, on the first tag of the turn, it's really easy. You, you use a Z, you're at four, all right, Robot Masters. But now if you're on to your second attack of the turn, then you got to figure out a way to you know, get to exactly four and not five. So I kind of like that, that there's a lot of little puzzles you can put together with him. I, I, I like the idea of, uh, was that Jeffrey Kahn when he saw this today messaged me, and I'm like, so does the punch Felicia not get to play this? I'm like, Jeffrey, it's a breaker two block I'm with Felicia, and it's an attack. Yes, we will find a way to play this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of breaker two blocks, one card I'm really excited with, for Fei Long in general, to step back a little bit to the character, it's Crimson Barrage. Uh, ooh, ooh, yeah. That is a breaker, breaker two, two block. block. Yep, and breaker unlike... two block, printed three damage, and it guarantees your next check's a six, even if you don't have a high attack in front of it, because it's Fei Long's E. That's true. Ah. And um, Crimson Barrage has a much better block. This Crimson Barrage blocks on a plus two mid block instead of a plus three. True. Yep. So... And you get that off of fire. Seems pretty good. Yeah, we've seen, we've seen Firebreaker decks put some work in in the past, so maybe we'll see it again with this set. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, th- I think this card's overall pretty solid. Um, combo mid-attack is not that hard to do right now. It certainly won't be hard to do in your draft pods. So, you know, this is, this is a card that's going to put in some work, especially in Limited. And then his uh, other attack for this week... Uh, chicken Bazooka. Um, <laughs> this is a four difficulty three check attack with a plus two high block. Air, fire, and water. Uh, four mid for one. And we got some more uh, keyword spaghetti here. Punch, safe, stun one, combo, mid attack again. And then combo E. This attack gets plus one damage for each of his keywords and for each keyword on one card in your opponent's card pool. So what you're telling me is it gets plus four damage to start. Minimum. Minimum. Yeah. Well, if you combo it, it's a four mid for five. And then it can have some upside on top of that. Yep. Yeah. It's actually pretty all right. That's that's a decent rate. I'm I'm not thrilled about needing to combo it before it, it's it really has text, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Cool. In a, in a super pinch, you can uh, just throw it out as your first move, get some hot stun one action, try to get some momentum going. I mean, it'd be pretty good if your opponent blocks previously with, like, a leaf shield to try to breaker mm-hmm. block you, and you get plus two more damage. Oh, yes. You know you know, you know what uh, what deck readily, need, readily needs stun? Is it can help it a lot? You know, uh, there's a water Lilith. Li- Lilith deck that kind of needs a little extra stun behind it now. It's gonna start. It's gonna start really losing the deck, especially when Ruler of Time disappears. We like Lee would stun, poke. Oh, deal. Take one. Pick it up. Play. Play the next. Play your next mid. Play this. 
You just so like... I think the we said Water Lilith. You reminded me of one card I like a lot in this format called Flying Yamato Spear, mm. which doesn't sound like a great combo with Lilith until you realize that if your opponent half blocks it, you can pick it back up with her E. Um, and I think that's going to be a big card for Fey Long decks. Actually, uh, it's really big. Yeah, sure. It's really fast. But you know, you play it as your first move. You multiple one, and then you start playing out your smaller attacks. Um, your, your four, your three, your two difficulty things on curve, and then you get the you you still count those as two attacks for the da- for Phalanx damage bonus. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, in, in speaking of Water Lilith with throwing a six damage move. Like for the longest time, Lilith decks were not embarrassed to play Sagaki offering. Mm. Uh, Kevin, there's one thing. His it's it's plus one damage for each attack card. Don't most oh, that doesn't that mean it doesn't mean multiples? Because attacks are I know attack and then there's attack card. So doesn't it have to be orange? I'm not sure. Okay, we're not we're not gonna go there today. Judge. We're not. I mean, we do have Ask Shane Duckworth available here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice that. I forgot about the chat window. So Hi, maybe, Shane. maybe Shane Duckworth could tell us uh, how the rules do affect that. So, so far, I mean, it seems like Faye Long, I think, is going to be excellent in draft. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't draft him. He's got two uh, common attacks. That's what I thought. Multiples are attacks, but not attack cards. Mm-hmm. They're so not he's, orange. He's got two solid attacks at common that are going to work really, really well for him. So, I think he'll be solid and limited. I'm going to be interested to see what he ends up doing in Constructed. Mm. Uh, so, any other comments on Fei Long stuff for tonight, gentlemen? All um, right. oh. No, I can't wait to try him out. So, I feel like with the bonus spoilers we got for um, E Honda last week, I think Shane Duckworth's really trying to convince me that he's playable. And that he's not the T Hawk of the set. A uh, card that kind of got spoiled sideways is uh, Blue Tsunami. Uh, we do apologize for the image quality. Uh, it was taken, it's blown up from a picture. Uh, Blue Tsunami is a 2 5 foundation with no block, with all earth and water. It says R flip. After your opponent plays a card, it gets minus one to all of its keyword ratings. And then R commit, after your opponent removes any number of cards from the top of their deck, seal one of their foundations. Yeah, I love how this kind of plays in, like, the the second ability kind of just, like, plays into Honda's theme of your opponent, of of sealing your opponent's stuff after they block. Mm Mm-hmm. But, and then, the first first ability is awesome. It's just awesome. Yeah, the, the first ability is great. I mean, turning a move into multiple zero... Is seems pretty good. <laughs> flying, that's a good flying him out of sphere. Uh, gets multiple zero. Discard zero momentum. Oh wait, I don't think you can legally do that. You cannot. <laughs> so, uh, overall, I think this is a solid card. I think it's going to see a lot of play, not even just in uh, E Honda. Uh, it, it is a very secret kind of sideways damage reduction card if you look at it, especially, you know, reducing the multiple keyword down to one or zero, depending on the situation. I think it's a good non-block because of all that it does, and you do find it at Uncommon. So, sweet. God damn it, Chain. Ch- troll- trolling us with some with minor spo- with semi-spoilers. See, they don't they don't even <laughs> exist to me. You know, if he's not gonna, if he's not gonna share the goods, you know. I, 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 I'm asking for, I'm asking what the whole UFS community is asking at this point. Where's and Guile? And that's where's Guile? <laughs> <laughs> like, just, well, get, he, just, just send one of us Guile. We will share it, and it'll be the exclusive preview of Ratchet CCG, and it'll shut up a lot of people for see, some reason. I see, think Guile is uh, lost in the the Brazilian jungle. His plane crashed, and he is trying to avoid capture by. Uh, M. Bison's scientist mercenaries who will transform his body into something horrible. Uh, uh, see, I, that, I, that's, I, char- that's that's the, the Charlie Nash uh, character from the Street Fighter movie. It's, it's a reboot, okay? We can mix the storylines. <laughs> see, I figured, you know, that they, uh, they fired uh, Guile because he was getting too close to finding out uh, what the rest of the set does, and so they're like, oh man, he's getting too close, let's fire him. 
<laughs> so apparently, in, in our in our chat, Shane Duckworth is dropping the truth bombs. Apparently, the remaining character, the question mark character on the kind of on their their Street Fighter display, is a secret rare. Effectively, it is more rare than an ultra rare. It is very hard to pull, and probably I hope more rare awful. than each each case. I, I personally hope it's awful, just for the and, and not as a I, as a an fu to the players, but. I don't want a character to be good and be a secret rare. That's I mean, a, you only I, need one. I mean, yes, you only need one. Turns oh, out it's God. your it's your stacker Dan. <laughs> stacker oh Dan. baby, <laughs> well, stack it up. You know, when Shane Duckworth tells me these things, um, you know, my distribution company just received their order today, and um. You know, he's got these seals on the boxes saying I can't open them. And, you know, I, I really want to get it. <laughs> you, Sean, you're on video. Careful, buddy. We don't need anything happening. <laughs> you're being live, you know what's live gonna streamed happen. into the home of the company you're talking about. You know what's going to happen is at the at Worlds, in one of those, like, the, the participation prize packs, someone's going to open that secret character, and it's just going to be like, the tournament's gonna stop for a second. Be like, seek your character. I'd be guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they've got these nice seals that say "Don't open," so I'm I'm not gonna be opening those. So, turns out I follow the rules. Good job. I mean, I don't I don't have any history of ever opening things before they're supposed to be open. But it would be pretty hype if someone opened uh, one of those at the uh, the event. Bye, Shane. Oh, see you Shane's, tomorrow. Shane is out of here. Cool. Remember, guys. Don't All right, poop. let's talk some smack about Shane. Nah, this, Shane this, Duckworth has the freest boss battles in the history of UFS. I mean, it was free because he played uh, Heidi against you with. Uh, <laughs> Somebody Reversal played guy. Heidi. Yeah, that was that was that. I was pretty free of that one. You were free to him. But yeah. Right, let's get back to uh, spoilers and let's talk about. Yeah. The best. Uh, e Honda card we've seen so far. Uh, and that is well earned relaxation. This is a three six uh, foundation uh, with all earth and water. Plus one high block. Has breaker one. Uh, you could destroy this puppy to give an attack minus three damage. And then once per turn, after your opponent removes any number of cards from the top of their deck, they remove an additional card playable while committed. Whew. That is that, that's spicy. I, I just want to break this down for a second. This is a six check foundation with a one high block. Yep. The last, it, you know, the first thing that came to my mind when I saw this card was the last six check foundation I remembered with a one block that had abilities, and that was Chester's backing. For some reason, that's where my mind instantly went. Even though this is not nearly as um, offensive as Chester's backing. I, I'm 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 glad that everyone is excited about this card. Um, I'm glad that this is like changing people's minds about E Honda. But y'all got some stat fetishes, man. Like stats only take you so far. It's got great stats. Like you can play it for the stats. But like, is this card as good as Throw It Down is? If you're playing it mo like for the block first and foremost, like off symbol Throw It Down. I think people, like I, no one plays that, but they could. I think they should more often. I mean, this but. card really excited me to put in my dual long deck. Hmm. After you remove cards, well, Sean, right, that's my dual long deck. Get, get your hand. Get, I've been playing down. dual long long before you were. Yeah, but you never did anything with it. Oh, um, Makai and Noble. I made elimination with dual long at an Empire Circuit. We should we should do that. We should set that up. We should set that up after Worlds. We probably should. Mm -hmm. I, I'm hoping we'll have we've some got more. we've got we've got a sweet tournament schedule set up. Dude, we could do a draft one. We could do like a, or like a sealed. Ugh, I hate draft. Team sealed. Let's go. So this card is at rare. So don't expect to see it too much in your draft pods. But do expect to see it frequently in your boxes. One thing I'm interested to see, uh, this set is 189 cards, gentlemen. And we don't know how many card numbers are filled out by those turbo decks. I mean, we know, a turbo deck, so we don't know the, 
Yeah, we don't know the size of the booster set, effectively. How many cards there are to open. Right. Because 189 cards is a big set. I think it's one of the if biggest we've a, seen ever. If it was a 189 card booster set, I would be like... Mm. But I think with the distribution of, one, there being starters, uh, and two, there being ultra rares in those uh, turbo decks, I, I kind of it, it lowers my lowers me down a little bit off my horse of how many boxes am I going to need to open? Well, if we estimate, just for just for kicks and giggles, and we say that each turbo deck contains 20 cards that are starter exclusive, you know, that brings the set size down to 149. That's still a big booster set. Yeah. Because, I mean, Red Horizon was 162. So something to consider. So yeah, we'll I, have to we'll have to keep keep our eyes on that this weekend. As long as there are any boxes in the in the next set that have Tainai Strike in it, if I open another Tainai Strike, I swear to God, I'm gonna lose. I it. sold Tainai Strikes. I'm so happy. Why would you somebody? Why would you dupe a UFS them. player like that? They were on my. I, I they were exactly a quarter. They wanted to give me a quarter for them. I was perfectly happy to hand a quarter over. Jesse, you should give me a quarter to take your tie knife strikes. Eh, that's what it feels like. <laughs> They're going to be gone, though. They're not in my binder anymore. That's all that matters. So, I think people are really excited about this card. Um, I'm Like you, Kevin Rubber, I'm not sure outside of specific decks if it's going to be terribly exciting. Uh, Edith Strike. I think that... E- if you're not playing a bunch of two checks, you can just like kind of throw this in a deck if you don't have any other three diffs. It's it'll be fine. Um, you know, it's nice to to be able to like if it's like turn four and you draw a hand with no attacks, you can either play this and try to kind of play some defense on the board, but also you know have a foundation for later, or hold it in your hand and break or one them. Yeah, you know, some flexibility. Yeah, but. I think it's all right. Uh, let's move on from spoilers. That's it for the spoilers for this week. And let's yep. talk about the real story. The World Vegas. Championship. Universal Fighting System World Champion will be crowned, what, five days from now? Four days? In a short Four 96 days. hours? 96 hours from now, we might have a world champion. Probably not, actually. These things kind of go late in the night sometimes. But... <laughs> we were done. Were we done with Nationals at like two in the afternoon? With, on Sunday, I mean, did Garrett Brett make things... elimination in that tournament? No, he did not. Though. See, there you go. Did Giggles make elimination in that tournament? No. They, I I know they they managed to they double queued the the team finals and the the singles finals. I think. Yeah, like I'm we actually, played. Did they play? We had, this, we had teams to start, was down to the finals, wasn't it? Teams was down to finals, and we had to be there. Uh, an hour and a half of head of singles, so that yeah. even though there was no inter- there was no overlap, they wanted us expected us to be done yeah. before topping and, started. And, and I think like the longest match by by a long shot was Jeremy versus Keenan. Yeah, that was the longest like, match of, of of the of this of elimination. I think. Yeah. So as far as worlds goes, I, I, we always like to talk a little bit before the championship. You know, as three experienced veterans, uh, two champions, one non-champion, you know, about stuff you I'm should do. I'm a journeyman. One, one long-time tournament player. I think we can, we can justly cha- say that. <laughs> you know, things that are going to Three help. long-time tournament players. Gosh, we don't have to be, we don't have to be exclusionary dicks about this, Sean O'Brien. Let, let's talk about yes. things that will make your experience a little better. See, Kevin Broberg and Jesse, they're smart. Uh, they have water. Uh, don't be like Sean O'Brien and bring cola. That, that will that, make your day go bad. Yes. Uh, in, in the grand scheme of things, I, I'm not sure I can confidently state one way or the other if this is a good idea, but it, it tends toward a bad idea. Uh, at the Cashman Center, there are alcohol carts. Don't drink it. Don't 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 get, don't 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 take the edge off in singles in teams. Like it 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 slows everything down. And makes it's a bad time overall. It's the opposite of hydration. Probably don't want to do that. Um, yeah. Bring a water bottle if you, or even spend the ten. Go to a, a supermarket, spend the ten dollars, buy one, yep. and you'll you'll thank yourself later. 
Like, I, I'm traveling, I'm bringing my bottle with me, and I'm going to empty this thing out, put it in my luggage, and bring it with me, because this thing is... That's why I want it with me so yeah, much. Yeah, if you, if you have a layover, it's, a water bottle is an MVP in the airport, too. Just, like, staying hydrated on a long day on planes is so valuable. Well, uh, gentlemen, uh, let's let's come back to stuff. Let's talk about kind of in order of the things that are going to happen and good advice to give as people are making their way to the world championship. And I think talking yeah. about uh, packing your luggage in the airport is pretty important. Uh, one thing I think that I advise, I know Kevin advises this, do not put your cards in your checked luggage. Yes. Never. So what ha- what can happen if you check your, your decks is that a TSA agent will see it on a scanner. It'll look really funny because it's a bunch of sleeved cardboard that's that's un- an unusual shape. It looks like some other stuff, whatever. Um, they'll take it out. They'll open the deck box. They'll go through it, and then they'll, they'll close it and put it back. And they have been known to not be gentle. put things back and yeah, not be gentle, close the lid with cards in the middle of it. Um, generally just ruin your shit. Um, keep, keep them, in take them carry on your carry on luggage, on your carry on bags. Um, don't bring an exorbitant number of cards. You don't need to bring like hundreds of cards with you, thousands of cards with you, like your whole collection. Uh, it, don't bring your commons boxes, bring your rares to trade and stuff. Yeah. Um, but the tip I have when you're going through, uh, when you have your, your carry on bags is to actually take your decks out of your carry on bags and put them on the, ta- on the, in the little, in the, in the, yeah, in the little cubby, the same way you would with like your your toothpaste or whatever, any of your any of that stuff, um, and then they'll go through the scanner and you know they might check it out, they might like pay some attention to it, but they won't hold up your whole bag to do that, and it'll, it'll, it saves you a lot of time compared to getting your whole bag scanned. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, that, that that's a huge piece of advice. I know uh, before I started doing that, my bag was hit up every single time I went through the yeah. TSA and. It, it, it's a pain in the ass to repack your bag that you spent so long getting perfect after the TSA has gone through it. Yeah. yeah. It sucks. Uh, you got any other airport tips, guys? Um, you know, make uh, sure you get there early. Get through TSA. Get Make sure you're at the right gate. I know Kevin and I nearly missed a flight one day because Southwest changed the gate and uh, didn't do a good job informing us. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let's see, anything else for the airport? You know, get checked in, take your water bottle, uh, fill your water. Make sure when you go through the Naked Tron that you don't have your belt on or your cell phone in your pocket. Uh, stuff like that. Common sense nope. traveling stuff. Uh, when you're on the plane, just leave your cards in your bag. The last thing you want on a crowded plane where you can't barely move is to drop your flying Yamato sphere <laughs> down into the abyss that is the floor of the fuel fuselage. So just leave your yeah. cards away. Uh, download some anime, put it on your phone, keep to yourself, and just try to enjoy your flight. Yep, get some reading material. Uh, I, I highly recommend the the web serial Unsung, which is wrapping up this weekend. It's a really great read. Um, or check out some stuff on Netflix. That, you can, yeah, you can that, watch the Netflix, Netflix offline. download thing is really... I, I'm. That's what I've done. I downloaded a bunch of episodes of a show. I've got I season to... three of Sherlock queued up. It's me. I have like I think I I gotta finish. I gotta actually have to finish doing the downloads. I have to do. Uh, I'm gonna watch a bunch of episodes of a show that I'm trying to keep up on. But I need to find my headphones. It's the one thing I am elusive eluded. If, if you're gonna watch a show on on the plane, bring headphones. Well, I can I I can put on closed captioning. That's the okay. One oh, that works. Up. That works. I so, can preload closed captioning. Good things to do there. Uh, when you get to where you're going to get, make sure you have your luggage. A lot of luggage looks the same. So make sure you grab your bag. Because if you get to your hotel and you have no trading cards, that's bad. Or you yep. have a bunch of ladies underwear and you're a man and you're not of that persuasion. That's bad. <laughs> uh, get, a, get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Especially, especially it's going to be really, especially for a lot of the East Coast players, Vegas can you can overexert yourself when you arrive, and you don't realize that you're how late you've been up when it's like it's midnight in Vegas when it's you know you're on your internal clock it's three a.m. and then you sleep for six hours and you're kind of exhausted and you wonder why. Yeah, don't, like, don't that, do that. Like like if you can get, like if you have the ability to, like pace yourself this weekend. If you're gonna go crazy. 
you don't make top cuts in anything, go crazy Saturday night. That's what I would say. Exactly. Um, for this particular Vegas trip, make sure you have a plan to get to the venue. Um, unlike in previous years where the event was inside the hotel, that is not the case this time. So you're going to want to make sure you get to the Cashman Center with plenty of time to get checked in. Uh, my understanding from Jasco Games is there will be a special check-in line for UFS players. You'll just have to show, you prove some way that you're a UFS player. So have your deck on you. That's pretty easy. Be like, this deck's full of UFS cards. I think that's why I'm here. I wonder if we can get Shane or whoever's doing it to say, welcome to the Salty Spistoon. How tough are you? <laughs> How tough am I? How tough am I? I played like 10 I played... extra games with Giggles this week. Oh, Sorry, right this way. I played four one checks and eight two checks. <laughs> so yeah, uh. get to get to the Cashman Center early. Um, if you're able to, do your deck list the night before. Have your friends check it, because uh, I mean we're under execution rules now. So if you screw up your deck list, you'll be executed. You'll be disqualified. No prizes. You're yep. done for the day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Cashman, the 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 Expo staff's recommendation is to carpool. Uh, parking is five dollars a uh, a car on the lot, but you have in and out privileges, which is nice. Um, and it's about a mile away f- even from uh the f- to Fremont Street, like the secondary strip, sort of. And it, it's not really a, a reasonable walking distance in the Vegas seat. So. No. You're cause... walking through. You're walking through. That mile is not a. It's one. It's. There's a the sun's gonna it's gonna be sunny in ninety yeah. all this week. Uh, two that mile is not through a an area that it's I would not through recommend a great neighborhood. Through. Yeah. Uh, speaking I, of the I, Vegas I, sun, so oh, there was ahead, people Jesse. that were bugged last year. I I, I, I know that for a, after reading through some forums about last year, there were some people that were mugged uh, walking back from the Expo to Fremont Street last year. Yeah, don't don't do so. that. Uh, speaking of the Vegas sun. Uh, those of us from the East Coast who are familiar when it gets hot out and we, it's muggy and we get sweat on our skin, that does not happen out in Vegas. It evaporates away. So you may not feel like you're sweating out. You are. Yeah. So if you're going to be spending an, ex- an extended period of time outside, make sure you drink water. Because you, you will not know, especially if you're from the East Coast, that you're getting dehydrated. Yep. And even inside the Cashman Center, it's going to be comfortable but you're still going to be sweating and you're not going to know and you're going to end up dehydrated. Playing UFS dehydrated is the worst. It's a fast track to poor decision get, making and saltiness. You get that round four headache. It's you, you, your day is going to be you're, you're shut out. Like that's I, I have gone through the Gen Con where I'm like round four. I'll get a head. I'll start getting a headache. I'll start feeling crappy and I'll realize why. And it, it screwed me over a few times. Don't don't do it. Just Keep yourself going. Drink water. Drink health. Be healthy. Have a good breakfast. Don't skip meals. Mm-hmm. I, I it, that's a very important thing. Like especially to playing. Uh, that I surprisingly the food there at the Cashman Center was pretty good. For and it was reasonable. Yeah, yeah, and uh, um, that, the the bathrooms. There wasn't a long line last year. There's decent water pressure at the of, water fountains. Yep. So. Yeah, it was, the convention was really well. It was very. They had a lot of good amenities. It was well executed. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're at the tournament, I recommend bringing some snacks with you. Uh, not like chips or candy, but you know, around three or four. If you don't have time to go get a lunch, you know, your your body's gonna be craving some protein, some fats. So yep. you, you can have like a granola bar or something, and when you start feeling hungry, that's gonna sustain you, especially if they intend to play. Uh, elimination for teams into the night that's going to end up being a very long day especially if you're uh, my team who's going to have to play all the way through the finals <laughs> love it Ke- you know kevin Probert's going to check a one and it's hey. going to be his day you never, you never know. know you never know you never know that is true so um yeah, and then out on the chat there, if you have any questions about what we're talking about, please, by all means, type in, ask a question. We're here to help you. Uh, um, after after your rounds are done and you know you're going to be making elimination, you know, make sure your deck is prepared to be turned in, uh, stuff like that. 
Uh, make sure your cards are in order. Don't leave your prize support packs in your deck box because technically they're not supposed to be in there. So do that, please. So I, I don't think that Betty White is going to... She She's no one lives forever, right? Uh, but I think that... The I, question don't mourn, how... I don't want to mourn her on the weekend I win a world championship. So could she hold on until Monday? And then I'll the be question of, of how long will she hold on is something I can't speak to with any confidence because I don't know anything about her personal life. I don't know how she takes care of herself. I don't know what her health condition is. I don't know how she's doing. I hope she sticks, a lot, sticks around for a while longer because she truly is an American treasure. Um, but what will happen, you know, we have no control over it. We're just trying to read tea leaves. And so, uh, you know, yep. Well, you cherish her while she's here. I mean, the thing is, old people, you know, are at a much higher chance of dying than young people. Uh, that's how aging works. So hopefully she'll be around for a good long time. But she is 95. That is quite old. So... Back from Betty White, uh, the only thing, the other thing I have to say about Betty White is if you see the Betty White slot machine, uh, throw $5 in and see if you win big. You might help sustain her. That might be how that, where the profits for that one go. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get into elimination, you know, get your deck ready to go. You know, if you can have it sorted, that makes the judge's life a lot easier. Make sure that sort your, deck. your deck is properly sideboarded out. Uh, one of the things I do to make sure at large tournaments that I sideboard correctly is I just take a picture of my deck list at the start of the tournament. So if at any time, you know, I'm confused or unsure what the correct uh, the correct format of the deck is, just pull out my camera, look at the picture, be like, oh, okay, that's what was supposed to be in my side deck. Yep. Uh, make sure you cooperate with tournament staff. Make sure you cooperate with convention staff. Uh, don't harass don't people. Unless it's a fun scene. Yeah, but don't, <laughs> don't, you got to understand that we're playing at an, a large event in front of a lot of people. Who, on a big stream. On a big stream once in a while. Watch the language. If you're on stream, watch the language. Come on, we don't, I, if anybody has watched the U.S. Nationals finals, like, I, I, I could, the amount of beefs you could put in that finals because of Phil Birch, let's not have that. Please don't. Let's, let's be a little respectful. Uh, when you're playing your matches, make sure you play. You know, you play correctly. Make sure, you know, you don't fast play. Make sure you don't slow play. You know, do like just right play. Um, don't ask. Goldilocks approach. Yes. Uh, don't ask other players rules questions. Call the judge. Uh, players yep. are really bad at knowing the rules correctly, because we've been around for a long time and we've had many different versions of the rules. And at the end of the day, they're not there to help you. They're there to win. So if you ever have a question, you're unsure, please call a judge. Yep. You know, they're there to help you. You know, calling the judge isn't like the bad thing to do. If you get into a situation you don't understand, you don't need to be like, well, you know, I'm calling the judge. Just be like, you know, I think we should call a judge right now. Call the judge over. Uh, Shane's pretty friendly. He's not going to yell at you. And he'll get you sorted out and get your game going. So, when in doubt, call a judge. Because mm -hmm. I know that's been a problem several times where rulings have just been screwed up. Yep. Truth. Uh, at the end of your match, please... Yeah, no, I've been tournament organizer a couple times at these large events. Go ahead and fill out your match slips quickly and turn them in as, as soon as possible. Uh, that makes the job yeah, in the tournament organizer a lot easier. Yeah, follow, make sure you know the instructions for how to correctly fill out your sheet... I've seen some truly creative ways to uh, to try to communicate what what the outcome of the match was, but like they'll tell you, okay, here's like put the number of match game wins on this line for this player and that line for that player, and like check this box for who won or put a W or an L appropriately. Um, just just make sure you pay attention to what you're doing and you aren't just making some nonsense on your car on your sheet. Yeah, because if you um, are found to be filling out your match slip incorrectly and submitting an, a falsified match slip or an accurate match slip, that is grounds for disqualification. And yep. that's pretty cut and dry on that one. If you circle the wrong name and then turn in the match slip and your opponent didn't say, well, you circled the wrong name, you asshole. Well, then you've, you've just falsified a match slip and they will disqualify yeah. you for that. 
And if you're not sure how to fill it out, like you get an unintentional draw and you're not sure who, like what you're supposed to do with it, circle both names, circle neither name, whatever. Call, Call for a judge. judge, ask a judge. Yep. <laughs> they'll, they'll appreciate having an easy layup answer to give for someone instead of having to figure out what's an attack card and what does that mean. <laughs> and don't troll the judges. Please don't do that. I imagine, like most Jasco Games events, this is going to be extremely short-staffed. So, you know, don't call the judge for questions just to, just to troll them. You know, just make sure that, you know, when in doubt, call the judge, but don't call him for silly things. Phil Birch, Dave Wagner, not Dave Wagner, Ben Shoemaker. Uh, my understanding is a question in the chat. Will there be commentary on the stream at all? Well, I could tell you, my lovely pretties, during the singles championship, I will be your commentator. So I'll be commentating the singles matches uh, with uh, Mr. Jason Haronsky. Oh, my God. So I Did think... he really just do that? <laughs> Guys, I, I couldn't get my orange cowboy hat in. It was It's not here yet. I don't think it's going to be. <laughs> oh. So I, that's I... a damn shame. We want people to find you one at a, at a novelty hat shop. That is true. <laughs> we'll be in Las Vegas. Like a giant, like those giant foam ones. Like, the, <laughs> like that uh, freaking Norm McDonald wore a couple, or once in a while. It's like, it's going to run that. <laughs> this is Sean O'Brien just hitting Jason every time he turns his head. <laughs> <laughs> My God, he checked a one. <laughs> My God, that, that one that had, a had a family. family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this is getting to be too much. So fill out your match slips. Get those things done nice and quickly. Uh, if you get called for a deck check, you know, make sure your deck is organized. Uh, make sure you're on time for elimination. Make sure you're on time for the tournament. The floor rules are incredibly specific about being late. If you aren't in line to register, when registration closes, you will receive a game one loss. Yep. So don't dilly dally. Get there. Get your deck list done, and then you can shoot the shit with your friends. Don't uh, don't. Also, oh, go ahead, Jesse. Don't be sorry. late for round. Don't be late for rounds either. No, right, it, it's the, rude. The, 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 the convention area is right next to the game hall. It's in the same like physical room. You can. You could you could don't go adventuring off if you see time is ten minutes left in the round because all you know what happens is it's the one time that an event we finish a round on time and the next round starts before then or we finish early. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We finish early and uh oh. So that would that would be bad. Remember, um, if you are speaking of so registering late, if you are in line for registration, when registration closes. That is a game one loss in the first round. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Kirk Polka. I don't care if you're Garrett Brett. They will give you a game loss. If you are not registered by the beginning of round one, you will lose round one. And you will be put in the tournament at the beginning of round two with a record of zero and one. During rounds, if you're late for your round, you have five minutes. After five minutes, you lose your first game. And after five more minutes, you lose your second game. So when you get done with your tournament, if you got to go take a sit down or get something to drink or take your medicine or whatever the case may be, do that early if you can. Get that done and out of the way so you don't get any nasty surprises. Yep. I think overall, just make sure you have a good time. Check out the convention. Spend lots of money in their vendor hall uh, because, you know, Level Up has been kind enough to give us free tickets this year to the event. I'm, I'm... So. There's some things I'm looking for. That's all I know. So I've got, I've take, got a few listings. Um, take that forty dollars you would have spent otherwise. Find the uh, retro video game guy. Buy his uh, Dreamcast. Or yeah, uh, the Sega, Sega, Sega Saturn. Saturn. That's what I you actually want. have. One, I have like three of them locally lined up for to look at when I get back. <laughs> uh, but I there's some certain games that I'm looking for, uh, and. I mean, I, I already have the rarest game on Sega Saturn, suppose, I found out a few days ago. Seems good. But somebody somebody gave me a box. and like, here's the Sega Saturn games. I'm like, thank you. This is worth $400. Thank you. Uh, specific <laughs> rules as far as spectating goes. I do want to touch on these real quick, gentlemen. Um, in teams, uh, after, you cannot talk with your teammates and seek advice on what to do during the team's matches. 
So, you know, if Giggles beats his opponent by turn two and he's watching my game and he's like, oh, Sean, you should do this, that's that's very illegal. You cannot do that. However, if you see an illegal play made by the opponent, call a judge. Well, Jesse, as a spectator, you are always required to call a judge when you see an illegally represented game state or an illegal play. True. So that is. And in that case, you shouldn't tell anyone you shouldn't tell the players hey here's what what, here's what you did wrong you should say guys you need to stop while i get it while i ask for a judge yeah yes you know it's everybody's responsibility to make sure we're following the rules i made finals of teams and worlds several years ago because of that specific situation happened be aware right so you can't advise your teammates but if you're done and you're sitting around you know it's would, it's not unadvisable to watch their games to make sure everything goes in a legal fashion. Yep. Uh, I think that covers the spectator rules. I don't think there's anything else we need to cover tonight, gentlemen. I think you know everyone should show up to Vegas, have a great time, uh, get the get the swag. I know that the deck box just for playing through singles is like thirty bucks normally, so I think that's a pretty good piece of swag just for showing up and playing through. So show up, play your rounds, get some cool stuff, and maybe uh, you'll be on cardboard. Cardboard! Cardboard! So, gentlemen, I think that wraps up everything we needed to talk about tonight. But I will ask a bonus question. Uh, this is for Kevin Broberg. What you got? Will e. Honda be playable and constructed? We were talking about this earlier this week. Playable, yes. Is he able to win things? Anyone can win things. Will, 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 do I expect him to, uh, like, I expect him to be maybe as like of a similar caliber to Goro, where at some point in his time, you know, probably even a little less than that, um, but at some point, like, he he might spike a tournament or two, um, you know, getting a good run, getting some good matchups. He, you can see him take it down. Mm-hmm. Excellent. That's what I expect. All right, guys, let's call it a night then a little early. We all got to get packed. Some of us have a really early flight tomorrow morning. Uh, Safe travels to all UFS players on their way to the World Championship. I know some people have had a little bit of a rough uh, patch in actually getting to Las Vegas, so hopefully everybody else's flights go smoothly and their flights go smoothly from here. Yeah, I I would not want to drive eight hours to get to my flight to Vegas. I, (laughs) I, I actually feel really sorry for the Omaha group. And the bullshit they are dealing with. Uh, make sure you get to the airport early. Be safe traveling. Get to where you're going to be. And you know, best luck to everybody this weekend. Uh, may we always check fives and you always check ones. And we will see you this weekend at, Na- at Worlds. Rather. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night UFS.